my mic on? Mic is on. We're broad. Can people in the room hear me or just people online? I'm not hearing any. Is there any amplification in the room? Not on the stage. So, Brent and I have to talk loud for the people that are in the room. But you're good. Everybody can hear okay? All right. Or it didn't matter because you're just here for the free pizza anyway without the Z. Okay. Or the free music. Let's give it up for Mark Learn on the piano. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, North Dakota Highway Patrol, been working as part of Team ND since 1988, so thank you for that. And also, speaking of pizza, uh, Capital Credit Union and Council of State Employees providing that pizza. Thank you very much. <laughs> we are going to jump uh, right into things uh, to kick us off. And of course, today is all about gratitude. And <clears throat> so I want to welcome everybody that's here. And I know we've got lots and lots of people watching online for this year's Governor's Awards for Excellence in Public Service. And it's an honor to be here, uh, and it's an honor to recognize the dedication and successes of, of Team North Dakota. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Brent Sanford, who's here with me, uh, the First Lady and myself, uh, we are filled with gratitude every day to have an opportunity to make a positive impact alongside all of you, our state team members, uh, on the citizens of North Dakota. And wow, over the last 18 months, uh, Team ND has accomplished some incredible things uh, coming through really unprecedented challenges in the history of the state. And today we want to take the next hour to recognize the extraordinary work occurring around the state, not just here in Bismarck, but across the state and celebrate some of our truly exceptional team members. And I want to thank uh, everyone uh, who took the time to nominate colleagues. Uh, today's uh, program, the awardees are all people who are nominated by their peers and by fellow uh, Team ND members. This is one of the ways that this uh, is a very, very special, uh, very, very special award uh, recognition ceremony. Uh, this year, it was a record over 900 nominations were submitted across 44 different agencies, highlighting the accomplishments of your fellow uh, team members. And as members of Team ND, we know, of course, we have six words that we try to strive towards every day, empower people, improve lives, and inspire success. And we do that with our cultural aspirations and our values of courage, curiosity, humility, and gratitude. <clears throat> and this uh, supports our ability to better serve our citizens uh, with, the five cultural, with the five cultural aspirations which we have, which was a focus on citizens, putting them first, a growth mindset, which means that we, ex we accept challenges and and we, we want new things to help us grow. Leadership everywhere, that even if you're somebody on the front lines uh, you, or and you've been here a year instead of 20 years or 30 years, that you can make a difference. That we work as one, we break down the silos across state government. We saw this uh, tremendously this last year on so many whole of government approaches, whether it was floods, fires, uh, droughts, uh, or pandemics, or just the day-to-day -day business that we do to serve the citizens of North Dakota. We saw great, great examples today of people uh, that you'll hear about today of people working as one. And of course, our fifth uh, cultural aspiration, the most important, the reason why many of you is here is to make a difference for the citizens of North Dakota. Uh, the more than 900 nominations that we received from 541 different nominators. So thank you again, the nominators highlighted these amazing efforts that were all worthy of recognition. and. Uh, we had a cross-agency selection team. They had a, a super challenging job this year of trying to narrow down the nominations. Uh, and everyone on Team ND should feel incredibly proud of if you were nominated uh, this year. Uh, that is uh, worthy of recognition itself, uh, the 900 people who were nominated, because obviously uh, someone was impressed by the work that you're doing. Uh, and again, our, our effort here today is to work to try to express our deep, deep gratitude for all the nominees for their work, the citizens of North Dakota, and to highlight a few of those really exceptional ones today. Uh, but before we get started, again, this wouldn't be possible without the, uh, the 541 team members who took the time during an incredibly busy year uh, to submit nominations. Uh, it's your nominations that make these possible, and we have an anonymous a donor 
uh, that's donated uh, four $25 gift cards. So I want to assure everyone no tax dollars were used uh, and no gift clause violations are occurring uh, as we submit, uh, as we uh, present these awards. Uh, but if you were one of the 551 people that submitted a nomination, uh, maybe you thought that was going to be confidential. Your name is in this bowl. You have a four out of 551 chance, just a little less than one in 100 getting drawn. Uh, if you submitted 10 nominations, your name is in there 10 times. So your odds went way, way up. Uh, Amra from the governor's office is going to pass that bowl over to Brent Sanford, and uh, he's going to pull out the, the uh, what, what are we doing here? One right now? Two? Two of these? going to pull out two, Brent. Try not to pull out the same name twice. <laughs> and go ahead and read the names. The winner is? Kari Salmon. And Jerry Dodds. Okay, congratulations for making nominations. We'll uh, keep track of those two and make sure that we get your uh, gift certificates. Due will be two more awards for uh, two more gift certificates will be given out at the end uh, for the uh, uh, for the nom nominators, uh, and that'll be the last thing we do at the end of the uh, end of the session today. But we're going to kick it off with the Pioneer Award for Excellence in Innovation. Uh, one of twelve awards we'll give today, and. Uh, the rhythm here, Brent's going to describe the award, what they've accomplished. I'll name the award winner. Uh, when the person wins, if you're in the room, come on up here uh, and have an opportunity to make a few remarks. If you're not, they're, through the magic of uh, the team working on this, it's very possible that the person who won the award will appear on the screen as if they're standing here with Brent and I, uh, and we'll get our picture with them on the screen or our picture with them in person, but uh, let's let's get started. Uh, and then you can start a side pool on whether the technology is going to actually work or not. Uh, okay, fire away, Brent. The Pioneer Award for Excellence in Innovation recognizes an individual with a pioneer spirit defined by their drive to innovate and eagerness to embrace change opportunities. Innovation pushes us to find new solutions to old problems, opening a world of opportunities for those we serve. This year's Pioneer recipient embraced innovation to transform our juvenile justice system adopting best practices and creating new processes that will positively impact children and families interacting with the juvenile justice system for years to come. Prioritizing access to services, the legislation she championed modernizes state law covering juvenile justice issues for the first time since 1969. It will reduce youth interactions with the justice system to improve outcomes later in life. Through her diligent and methodical work, she built support for, changing, for change working with Interim Judiciary Committee, the Commission on Juvenile Justice, and the Judiciary Committees of both chambers of legislature. Lawmakers passed and the governor signed highly impactful legislation that provides children and families with the services and supports they need and reduces unnecessary interactions with our justice system. Her work to modernize the juvenile justice system is helping to create a system better able to serve the children most in need and to help them become the responsible and productive adults. Uh, please join us in congratulating a 25 year veteran uh, serving the citizens of North Dakota. She's the director of the juvenile court for unit two, which is the East Central and Southeast based out of Fargo, recipient of the 2021 Pioneer Award for Excellence and in Innovation, none other than Karen Kringley. Karen? And Karen's here in person. How exciting is that? Thank you very we're much. We're gonna we're gonna have a, we're gonna I guess pop. We're gonna take a picture without a microphone in front of us. Let's slide that way. We'll get this down. There you go. We'd love to have you say a few words. Thank you, Karen. I'm extremely humbled and very proud of the um, state of North Dakota for the work they've done for juveniles. Um, this past year, the work on House Bill 1035 uh, was really a team effort, and it was led by Representative Larry Clemine, and I, I really would like to uh, thank him for all of the push he gave, the incentive, the, the passion for the work. Um, our small work group worked throughout the pandemic. Um, over video conference for many, many hours. And I'd like to also thank um, Senator Jonelle Bakke, Senator Diane Larson, Representative Kim Koppelman, uh, Corey Peterson from the Department of Human Services, Lisa Beergard from the Department of Corrections, uh, Lisa Johnner from the North Dakota Association of Counties, and Travis Fink from Indigent Defense. 
Um, I really feel like the work of the juvenile court is not known by many of our citizens because it happens behind closed doors. And it does, it's that way for a reason. It's to protect kids, knowing that most kids make mistakes and most of us in this room have made mistakes as teenagers. And so there's a good reason for that. But I think um, this new statute will allow a lot more transparency in that people will understand what happens every day in court. And I think we'll do an even better job at protecting our communities and um, building skills for the kids we work with and helping the families and the victims with which we interact. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Take it away. Next is the Zazula Award. The Zazula Award is presented to those state team members whose work and care goes beyond a simple job description. They are those team members who go the extra mile to make sure questions get answered and citizens are satisfied. They are the one who helps, providing aid when needed and seeking no recognition. This year's Zazula recipient has gone above and beyond their usual job duties to lead the multi-year development and implementation of a new cloud-based data management system for his division. He understands and has taken on the critical task of translating key technical language and processes for the software development team to ensure the creation of a system that works best for those who use it. As the program has rolled out, he has been an active partner for the software development team, helping to troubleshoot problems and training teammates in the new system. A mentor and an educator, his positive attitude and appreciation of change have made him the go-to person to assist the team with trainings, questions, and teaching moments. We're going above and beyond to support the successful implementation of the, the visionary North Star data management system, uh, which of course is part of the Department of Mineral Resources. This is a system that's going to, that helps our team uh, protect our environment. It helps ensure compliance uh, from our, the great operators we have in the state, uh, and it helps improve processes and resources for team members. And this allows our team members uh, who've got to cover broad, broad geography to better serve our citizens and effectively communicate um, with with the with the people that we serve, uh, and through this multi-year implementation, uh, this person's been an incredible leader. Please join me in congratulating 14-year veteran with the Department of Mineral Resources. He's a Petroleum Resource Geologic Analyst and the 2021 recipient of the Zulu Award, or the one who helps, goes to Richard Suggs. Richard. <clears throat> I guess, thank you, Governor. Um, uh, it's amazing just to be nominated, let alone to be receiving an award. I appreciate it. Um, it's also amazing to realize that your colleagues think enough of your contribution or contribution throughout time or throughout the project to uh, consider make, taking their time and effort to make the nomination. So I have to thank everyone that did so. Um, and then thank everyone and the rest of the team that has helped with the project and everything that has been asked of you to, despite um, being uh, busy and overwhelmed at times yourself. So thank you, everybody. All right, next is the Harvest Award. The Harvest Award for Excellence in Quality is given to an individual who has made an exceptional commitment to quality, which they have demonstrated in their everyday work month after month. The results of their leadership and dedication to making a difference have proven to be a true harvest shared by everyone in their organization. This year's Harvest recipient has played a critical role in providing Team ND with the tools and skills to thrive in a virtual environment. She has been a valuable partner to teams across the state, developing and providing an immense amount of education content to support the adoption of technology solutions through Microsoft 365. Her expertise in Teams has been invaluable to teams and team members searching for ways to maintain connection in the virtual environment embraced by the 21st century workforce. She has also been instrumental in helping our teams remain collaborative in that environment through the introduction of the Klaxoon, a cloud-based all-in-one tool for digital collaboration tools and resources used for brainstorming sessions, hosting meetings, project management, and agile teamwork. Her consistent, cheerful attitude and ready willingness to help day after day have made her a go-to partner for agencies and team members looking to better utilize the tools available to them to better serve our citizens. 
Uh, this recipient who won a nominator called not the woman behind the scenes, but the woman behind the screens. Uh, she's worked with agencies across the state to develop, identify technology solutions, delivering quality service to a range of citizens. Uh, I've had the honor of being in the room with this individual for countless meetings, uh, state constitutional meetings uh, that have been coordinated and have had to be held uh, during the pandemic uh, with as many as uh, five or more elected officials uh, coordinating across. Uh, She's here today. She doesn't know she's being recognized. She's sitting behind a screen. Uh, it's fun to be able to surprise and recognize our 13-year veteran enterprise collaboration administrator with North Dakota IT, recipient of the 2021 Harvest Award for Excellence and Quality, none other than Carly Berger. Carly. What would we do without you? Thank you. If you run a Teams meeting this year, give it up for Carly. Okay? <laughs> well, it's it's not just me. There's a whole team. Um, it's just happens to be I'm the one people ask questions because I'll answer it right away. So I appreciate this very much. Um, there's a lot of good people doing a lot of good work. So to win this is very, very humbling. So thank you. Thank you. Next is the Landmark Award for Excellence in People Management. The Landmark Award honors a manager who has generated a remarkable spirit of unity and purpose in their agency providing their team with the plan, the support, and the role model necessary to succeed. As a result, their team is enabled to make a true difference for citizens. This year's landmark recipient is an individual who leads with a passion for her work, inspiring her team. She looks at every process as a challenge to do better, not only for her team, but also for the customers they serve. She is willing to tackle projects, find ways to make improvements for different processes, and streamline the workload. She creates unity through her positive spirit, and as each of her nominators highlighted, she prioritizes communication and coaching with her team members. She provides a clear plan to her team, encouraging team members to leverage new tools and grow professionally and emphasizing cross-divisional collaboration. As a testament to her leadership style, this individual is overwhelmingly nominated by the team members she leads, one of which shared, we are inspired by her charismatic spirit and boundless energy. She is resilient and leads with humility. She's both our coach and our cheerleader. We are extremely fortunate to have her as our leader, our friend, and our mentor. As a visible leader and a pioneer of change, she inspires her team members to take smart risks and drive positive change by creating, communicating, and implementing a vision. It's an honor to recognize after 37 years with Team ND, Assistant Director for Case Management for the Department of Human Services and recipient of the 2021 Landmark Award for Excellence in People Management, Terry Peterson. my director misled me how he got me here <laughs> and i think that's the first time he did that purposefully <laughs> apparently more people knew about this than me thank you very very much this is incredibly humbling i'm so grateful that what i seem to be doing every day is making a difference I have the greatest team in the world to work with, and I appreciate everyone. Thank you. Congratulations, Terry. Next up is the Heritage Award. The Heritage Award honors an individual who has shown resourcefulness, determination, and personal integrity, overcoming obstacle after, ob after obstacle to do what's right by the citizen. 
This year's Heritage recipient has demonstrated an extraordinary commitment to our citizens, becoming a highly respected and trusted resource in our state and beyond. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, our priority has been to save lives and livelihoods, and one of our most effective tools to accomplish that is vaccines. Under her leadership, North Dakota was one of four states selected by the CDC as a COVID vaccine planning site and became the first state the CDC visited informing the rest of their, of their COVID vaccine planning site visits. She has led efforts to improve access to COVID vaccines, collaborating with local public health to create vaccination sites across the state, implementing drive through vaccination sites, ensuring early access to vaccines for our tribal nations, developing a cross-border vaccination program with Canada. Outside of COVID, through her hard work and the team she has built, North Dakota has developed one of the top immunization programs in the nation. She and her team continue to promote and strive to keep all childhood and adult vaccination rates at appropriate levels, helping make North Dakotans the healthiest, most productive people possible. She has an uncanny ability to cut through the haze and present information in a clear, concise, matter-of-fact manner that is always data-driven and respectful of the opinions of others. And certainly in the past year, uh, the work that she and her team has done, uh, it's clear that this work has saved lives and it's saving uh, hospital capacity. For her role in developing a world-class compassion immunization program and her dedication to the health of North Dakota citizens, please join me in congratulating with more than 18 years serving our citizens, Director of the Division of Immunizations in the North Dakota Department of Health and the 2021 recipient of the Heritage Award for Citizen Focus, this award goes to Molly Howell. Hi, thank you. Uh, can you hear me okay? Go ahead, Molly. You can hear me okay? Yep, yep, we can. Oh, perfect. Uh, well, thank you. I'm honored to um, be nominated and to receive this award. Uh, really, I'm the person that you see a lot in the media, um, but I have a really strong team behind me that has been working really hard uh, to make sure everyone has access to COVID vaccine and the best information about COVID vaccine. And over 700,000 doses have been administered in North Dakota, and I didn't give a single one of them. So um, thank you to all the healthcare providers and public health and pharmacies that have been working hard to make sure people are protected against COVID. So thank you. I'm honored. Thank you. Congratulations, Molly, and uh, thank you, and uh, thanks to your whole team. Our, our next award is for the uh, Frontier Award for Excellence in Continuous Learning. The Frontier Award for Excellence in Continuous Learning is given to an individual who has actively sought out new frontiers of learning by increasing their own knowledge through a growth mindset and becoming a center of knowledge for their peers. In this way, they are championing education throughout government, introducing us to new skills and tools that make us more effective at what we do. This individual is well respected in their agency as an expert in their field and, has a go -to, and, and as a go-to source of information. A career dedicated to learning has made him a published author and co-author with more than 25 peer-reviewed articles, 40 popular articles, countless agency reports, and one book. He shares his knowledge and love of learning with others, mentoring graduate and postdoctoral students, and serving in several roles in our university system, including adjunct professor. As one nominator said, he never ceases to impress with his well-thought ideas for filling information gaps and his endless eagerness to help improve our wildlife management. His passion serves as a quiet reminder to the team that we do what we do because it is more than a job. In his more than 30 years with the state of North Dakota, his passion for wildlife has led to a career defined by learning and inspires team members and community members to seek the joy of learning about the amazing natural world of North Dakota. It's an honor to recognize big game biologist with North Dakota Fish and Game and recipient of the 2021 Frontier Award for Excellence in Continuous Learning, none other than Bill Jensen. Bill? Uh, 
Um, this is truly humbling. <clears throat> I was told one time that uh, if you surround yourself with good people, they make you look good. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to have a wonderful wife and a wonderful family and uh, be surrounded by a group of professionals for the last 30 years that I think are second to none in for wildlife agencies in the country. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. And our next award is the Sodbuster Award. The Sodbuster Award for Excellence in Growth Mindset is presented to individuals who embrace challenges as opportunities to learn and grow. They actively seek out and incorporate feedback from others to improve their own knowledge, skills, and abilities. This individual came to the state with a deep passion for learning and an enduring belief that we can achieve anything we set our mind to by asking questions and actively investing in our own personal development. She has built a reputation across the state as a go-to person for learning, coaching, strategic planning, facilitation, meeting and training design, and more. She fearlessly negotiates with outside providers to provide the very best and timely learning solutions for our team members and leaders and has been instrumental in building our organizational capability in change management, leadership, strengths, engagement, and adult learning. But it is her attitude that truly inspires those she works with. She truly believes in the power of knowledge and her positive attitude inspires those she works with to seek bigger and better knowledge and solutions. This individual embodies the growth mindset, encouraging every member of Team ND to grow and secure world-class educational opportunities. Uh, with her leadership, uh, we've in the state have built one of the strongest and best in the nation, uh, continuous learning and learning curriculum models. And I would, as I give this award, I would encourage anybody, if you haven't taken advantage of all the great classes that are out there, uh, to do so to keep moving yourself, your team, and your career, your department, your agency forward. Uh, and so it's an honor today to recognize uh, after the big impact she's had just in with two years with Team ND, the Director of Leadership and Learning for the State of North Dakota, recipient of the 2021 Sodbester Award for Growth Mindset, none other than Molly Harrington. Molly. <clears throat> Wow, I was told I was on to run backup for Carly to get her award. So um, not often do you find me without a lot of words, but today might be it. Thank you so much, Governor Burgum and Governor Sanford. Um, it's honored to be nominated for this award and selected. But in all honesty, I feel like this award is for the entire team that's working really hard behind the scenes to behind the scenes to encourage Team ND to embrace that growth mindset. You know, I think about the training team that pours in tons of energy and they come along with me on some really crazy adventures as we try to bring different content to Team ND. Um, we've got fabulous agency partners in the HR stream and just in our general leadership. And it's due in huge part to them that we've been able to bring a lot of those opportunities that you read off to Team ND. And um, of course, we have the Leadership Everywhere Alliance dream team and our lead group, they are facilitators from across the agencies that are helping us to bring Leadership Everywhere classes to all of Team ND while we continue to grow and expand the, the offerings that we have. So thank you so much. Um, you know, when I was a kid, we used to say that your attitude is a choice. And I think now as an adult, your mindset is also a choice. And every single day we can choose to grow and stretch in different ways and so it is an absolute pleasure to get to serve team nd in this way and just uh, a little teaser since i have you all sitting here we have a new uh, great big opportunity a new adventure to shift our mindset uh, that's going to be coming to all of team nd for the first time ever we're launching in the month of november a new learning event series coming to us through leader cast which is a global leadership summit to all of Team ND. And so uh, this is the first time I'm saying that publicly, but I, I hope that you're excited and I think this is the right audience. So stay tuned for more details on LeaderCast. And uh, thank you so much. I am, I am really grateful.
Thank you, Molly. Congratulations. And uh, uh, if probably for those in the room, it's too small to see the little chat box, but there was came up when she was talking and said insanely great nomination. Uh, congratulations, Molly. Uh, and uh, leave it to Molly to be promoing uh, all the new learning activity <laughs> that's coming. We love that about her. Uh, so uh, keep up that continuous learning team ND and look for those new offerings. Uh, you'll learn more about those soon. <clears throat> Next is the Telegraph Award for Excellence in Technology. It's presented to those team members whose use of technology has transformed how we as state government interact with our citizens and how they interact with us. Technology is changing every job in every industry and state government is not immune to these forces. We need team members who embrace the opportunity technology provides us to better serve our citizens and seek to be on the cutting edge of that change. This individual's enthusiastic leadership championed all 11 North Dakota University System institutions to a single instance of Blackboard Learn. His work has enabled students to take multiple courses from multiple NDUS institutions all in the same online space. North Dakota led the nation in this effort to create a more seamless student and educator experience. Only one other state in the country, Oklahoma, has adopted this change, using the North Dakota experience as a model in that effort. He continues to build on the success of this centralized system, leading the delivery of analytics for LEARN. This provides team members the ability to optimize learning environments and empower students through data and analytics previously unavailable. Uh, some of you may think that having a, a, a excellence in technology award named after the telegraph seems a little bit of an oxymoron, uh, but it, this one's got a special uh, touch for me because the the telegraph was the first technology. I mean, if you don't count the train itself, was the technology that really transformed uh, connections from uh, what was the frontier in North Dakota uh, back to the rest of the world, uh, shortening the time frame for news and information to you know seconds from days and weeks. But it was uh, also a personal connection too, because as many of you know, that my great grandmother was as a lot of people have the same great grandmother, uh, Linda Slaughter. Uh, she was a, one of the first uh, residents of Camp Hancock, then Edmonton and then Bismarck. Uh, and, and as an early citizen here uh, was uh, selected by the community to be the person that actually sent the first telegraph from Bismarck when the tele telegraph wires were, were put in. So uh, I, 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 lo I love the name of the award and I love the, this award winner for the work that he's doing for the technology to create efficiencies and opportunities and collaboration of our higher education institutions. Uh, we know that uh, there was forces of change pushing on higher ed pr prior to the pandemic. With the pandemic, those forces all amplified. So the need to streamline support, setting the stage to effectively manage instructional needs uh, during not just during COVID-19, but to meet the needs of students of all ages and all geographies. Uh, we've the, our, our, our institutions have really moved forward in the last two years. And so it's an honor to recognize the director of enterprise systems within the North Dakota University system and the 2021 recipient of the Telegraph Award for Excellence in Technology, Corey Quirk. Corey. <laughs> speak well it's humbling one getting the award it's another being up here with all you award winners hearing all your um, exceptional things that you're doing across the state i almost feel kind of selfish accepting this only for the reason of as one member mentioned it takes a team and i have been so lucky over the years working for higher ed in the situations that i've been put in with these people uh, it, it's great when you have a great team it makes you look really good and it's i've been truly truly blessed i tell my team that almost on a weekly basis in team meetings that um, they let me do my job, I let them do their job, and in the end, here we are. And they love challenges and they accept them. Um, it's, it's very humbling to be a, with your staff and your nominators look at you this way, but again, it's, it wouldn't be done without all the other people. And I'm not going to mention names because I said I would forget people and I'd be held against that. So, because there is so many people across not only NDUS, CTS, but all 11 campuses as well. So, again, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Corey, and uh, thanks to you and your team for all the work you're doing for those 40,000 plus uh, ND University System students across our state and across our country. Uh, next up, we're moving into the team awards. 
Uh, each of the individuals we've recognized, of course, uh, took the opportunity to recognize the team behind them. But these awards, uh, the next uh, several that we're going to give out are actually team awards. They have been called the Roaming Bison Award in the past because we had a beautiful Roaming Bison trophy uh, that then would roam. It would sit with the team that won for the year that they were the team winner, and then it would roam to the next team the next year, and it became a traveling uh, trophy. Uh, and and so again, this award is given to a team that's you know uniquely exceptional. They collectively demonstrate innovation and in project execution, exhibit cur courageous curiosity and problem solving, use technology to increase efficiency. They represent the best in class in citizen focus and a commitment to being world class service providers. Uh, it takes many people to work together uh, and work as one and move as one across the state as we draw on the collective talents of creating teams that are stronger than the sum of their parts. Uh, that's why this year we're introducing uh, more Roaming Bison Awards because we had so many incredible team efforts uh, during the past 18 months. So we give us an opportunity to celebrate multiple teams in recognition uh, across agencies and people working as one. And so really we're going from the Rose Roaming Bison Award to a Roman Roaming Bison Award herd. So we'll actually have a herd of bison. Brent knows how much I love bison. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and so I'm happy that our herd is, our herd is growing. Uh, so with that, uh, we're going to give away multiple Roaming Bison Awards. Uh, and Brent, uh, set up the first one for us. With that, our first Roaming Bison recipient today is a team that has risen to face incredible obstacles to serve a disadvantaged community responding with flexibility in what can be an environment that is inherently inflexible. As COVID precautions pushed many of our teams into virtual or physically distanced environments, the Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation Medical Team sprang into action to develop processes and, pro and protocols to safeguard residents and team members in our correctional and rehab facilities. The team also assumed a critical leadership role in coordinating mitigation efforts with county and regional correction correctional facilities. Their role during the pandemic has been wide in scope from conducting testing and vaccination events to providing care to ill residents, to hosting town halls, to developing quarantine and isolation, isolation strategies, all the while maintaining the normal healthcare responsibilities that go with a correctional institution. I, I wanna just uh, say something about this team uh, because early in, early in the pandemic, other states uh, had COVID raging through their correction facilities at such a rate that they actually had separate separate dashboards posted for the number of deaths within corrections. Uh, you know, inability to distance, uh, inability to provide the proper care, uh, and these are people that are that are in the care of the state, uh, the residents within these facilities. And uh, we've always had a, a philosophy, uh, at least in recent years, in corrections that the a whole purpose of corrections and re re corrections and rehabilitation with a heavy emphasis on rehabilitation, that the effort of that group is to help make better neighbors, uh, not uh, not make better prisoners. And so really, really, uh, this, this group uh, did incredible work. They performed over 70,000 COVID text tests. Uh, they cared for more than 600 residents who did become ill, but they gave great care and we had very few fatalities within corrections. Uh, they mitigated the spread of COVID-19 among a very vulnerable population and helped prevent tragedies uh, in our system as was seen in other states. Uh, and this is the uh, a small but mighty uh, DOCR medical team. Uh, there's more than, than this, but we have some that are, we're gonna have asked to come to the stage today uh, to represent the entire team. But leading that team, Dr. John Hagen, also uh, at, jo asked to join up here today, physician assistant, Deb Hodek, registered nurse Beth Tehan and dental technician uh, Melissa Fazer. If the four of you could come up, uh, we want to say thank you to all of you. We'll grab a picture first and then we can uh, hear from all of you. Want to slide this way a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Well, on behalf of uh, the uh, 
medical department for the Department of Corrections. I really want to thank uh, Governor Bergham and, and the uh, selection team. It's a tremendous honor to be nominated. Uh, I have the privilege of working uh, with some of the <coughs> finest professionals in the state. These, these folks were amazing. Um, I worked with nurses, a dental professional, psychiatry, uh, and providers that are that are second to none. Uh, on February 12th of 2020, Beth Tehan, well, I'll introduce everyone in just a second. Beth uh, announced the first meeting to talk about uh, this pandemic we'd heard about. And from that day, we had tremendous support from our director, from our director of facilities. From day one, we were blessed with incredible support and no resistance as we moved through. This team uh, brainstormed <clears throat> policies, procedures, and operationalize across six campuses, how to handle COVID. Uh, they went ahead then with operations and with uh, security uh, and said, how will we build isolation and, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and quarantine space. So facilities came in and built new rooms for us. They got ahead of the curve and got it done. Uh, over time, as you said, more than 70,000 uh, PCR tests for COVID have been done in this, in this system. And in fact, just last week, uh, in this week so far, we've done 1,200 tests. So this is routine, and this team did it with not a single extra individual and continue to do it. The nurses here who, who literally, no, beyond our folks here, nobody could take time to come in. The nurses uh, delivered steroids, uh, remdesivir, high flow oxygen, things that you usually find in a hospital. Uh, we've given antibodies, things that are done nowhere else in the nation in prison systems. I work with the greatest team ever. That's all there is to it. I want to shout out uh, to uh, a couple of the places that really helped us. State Lab uh, with Dr. Mason, incredible support, never failed from day one. Um, Kirby Kruger and the folks at Department of Health, uh, give a face Salzer and folks, unbelievable support uh, for our congregate living. Uh, very important to us is the microbiology services that is out of NDSU. They created, developed, and operationalized a system that does wastewater testing for us every day. And that's the backbone of what we do. And that didn't exist when we started. So you talk about technologies that didn't exist. It's unbelievable. And they're the backbone of what we do. And uh, and our facilities folks who literally built the system and the automated system to get that wastewater sampling. So I want to introduce the folks and I, I stole the mic because I saw it a minute. So I did it. If I can, I'd like to introduce, uh, I have, uh, Melissa Fazer. Melissa is a, a certified dental assistant who stepped up and became certified and educated in how to do mask uh, fitting and testing and fit hundreds of our folks to have them ready and safe. Then went ahead and was co-founder of a group called the Rona Roadies for coronavirus. They crisscrossed the state thousands of miles testing at facilities. Unbelievable work and uh, well outside of her scope and she just said, I'll do it. Uh, Deb, uh, I'm sorry, Beth Tehan is chief nursing officer. She recently retired. She's a lifelong uh, public servant. Um, she must start at age eight, I imagine, right? Something like Something that. Something like that. <laughs> and she ran uh, the entire nursing event. It was also co-founded. Got on the road with us and went out and tested and spent thousands of miles crossing, uh, doing testing, getting folks ready. Deb Hodak, uh, who holds the award and should hold the award, has personally done more than 15,000 tests as one of the providers. And so I just can't... Uh, well, I got to stop talking because they're waving, but uh, it is a great group and I am just honored uh, to be able to work alongside them. Anybody else? Any other thoughts? <laughs> I'd like to just step up and, and thank our leader. Um, he kept it all together. Some of us went into panic mode and Dr. Hagen was there to calm us all down organize it and, and kind of help us get through all this. I've been in the medical business for 40 years and I never ever thought I would be in a pandemic. And what it all involves, I mean, you worry about your family, you worry about the people you work with, and you worry about the people you take care of. And he was able to keep us all together, keep it all organized. And I do have to repeat what Dr. Hagen said is we have an excellent, medical department. Not only did we roll up our sleeves, we put on our masks, our gowns and gloves and went to work every day. Thank you. Hi, I can't say um, anything better than um, working the 31 years I did for the Department of Corrections and Rehab as a nurse, as a director of nursing and then as the chief nursing officer. I can't thank them enough great group of people to work with. I'm still helping out as a temp nurse because of the shortage, but I just want to say what a great department to work for. 
you know, during the pandemic, we all worked very hard, very, very hard for one, one goal to keep our staff and our residents safe. And I think we did an outstanding job and I can't thank everybody enough, so. Um, I just want to say I can't think of a better team to be a part of. Um, this has been my favorite job I've had throughout my career, which has been longer than I care to say. Um, but I just enjoy going to work every day and being able to help people. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you again, the DOCR medical team. Great work, congratulations, and uh, thanks for all, all you've done. Our next Roaming Bison Award. Our next Roaming Bison goes to a small but mighty team. Over the last 20 months, there have been tremendous efforts by teams across state government. This team has interacted with every agency in state government to ensure financial support made it correctly to businesses and citizens without delay, helping distribute billions of financial support. In an average year, this team develops multiple revenue forecasts and analyzes each agency budget in the process of developing the state budget plan. Through COVID, they have scaled up to collect, analyze, research, manage, and distribute billions of federal dollars delivered through the CARES Act and the American Rescue Plan on top of their regular duties of building the state budget. They are committed to understanding the agencies they work with. Their consistent and patient efforts led to an, an understanding of key fiscal policies and result in better and stronger fiscal management practices. As was the case across state government, certainly with this team uh, during the pandemic, people had to do their regular jobs they were doing and then they had more work piled onto it. But as Brent said, uh, the the billions of dollars that flowed through uh, often with uh, complex, confusing, uh, not fully developed and changing federal guidelines uh, basically created a workload for this team that was, I would guess, somewhere between five and 10 X what they normally would have had in a year uh, working a team. But, you know, with the K-12 higher ed, the support for individuals, uh, unemployment, uh, CRF, ARPA funds, uh, all of those things in the changing rule led to enormous complexity. And, 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 and in many cases, they had to go through and do complicated financial analysis to attest whether or not the state was eligible to receive the funds in the first place. And so each of those things they were doing was like was like doing the, uh, the entire state budget that we have to do every two years. They kept having to kind of do that and then they would have to do it again and then they have to do it again. And so it was like a never ending workload. Uh, and but they did it without complaint. They did it on time. They did it with the with the skill and that helped move the financial dollars to help individuals and businesses and agencies uh, across our state uh, to get through the pandemic. So uh, going above and beyond to identify the most ineffective uses of these federal dollars, please join us in recognizing uh, our second 2021 Roaming Bison recipient, uh, none other than the OMB budget analyst team. And uh, we've got uh, on that team is uh, Stephanie Johnson, Larry Martin, Renee Blooms, Becky Dykert, and Stephanie Gullickson. Congratulations, OMB panelists. Hi, Governor. Thank you very much. And to those who nominated the budget analyst team for this award, it's very much appreciated by every single one of us. So let me introduce the analysts. I know you already have, but Stephanie, if you want to wait, okay. Renee, Larry, and Becky and myself, Steph. Like you had said, Governor, we're a small team, yet we're able to accomplish many great things when we work together. Three budgets in 18 months was no uh, small task, but this group rolled up their sleeves and dug in and got the work done. Um, this also would not be possible without our great leadership, um, Joe, hiding in the back, <laughs> and also um, our rock star, Lori, who's also hiding over here, who keeps us um, all organized and on schedule. So we're grateful to be part of this team doing great work and honored to support all the state agencies during the budget process and in, in whatever fiscal matters we can help them with and lend a hand. So um, thank you again from all of us. And if any of my colleagues have anything else to say, otherwise, Governor, we can turn it back to you. Thank you. Well, I just want to I want to say uh, uh, Brent and I didn't recognize it was actually uh, the team because we don't see computers and papers in front of you with a bunch of uh, calculators. So this is very odd to see you at a table with uh, with no working papers. <laughs> Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Give it up for the OMB team.
Our next roaming of eyes and word. From the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, our primary goal has been to save lives and livelihoods. This team has been a valuable partner in our goal to save livelihoods. Since March of 2020, they have processed more than 280,000 unemployment claims, equaling nearly 14 years worth of claims in only a year and a half and paying out nearly $1.25 billion to, to eligible North Dakota workers. Despite this massive increase in workload, this team was able to deliver fast and timely service, making North Dakota one of the top three states in the nation in 2021 for making timely payments and number one in the nation from April 2020 through March of 2021. Through this, they prevented nearly $500 million in fraud and soared through a U.S. Department of Labor audit with zero to minimal findings, demonstrating a commitment to a high quality of work amid unprecedented scaling. Additionally, workforce centers in nine locations across the state have stepped up to provide assistance to employers and workers, promoting, promoting more than 18,000 job openings in North Dakota. They have held drive up and outdoor career fairs and implemented the successful job up ND campaign to target the multiple industries hiring across North Dakota. They demonstrated curiosity and problem solving old technology to use it more efficiently and utilize new technology to create dashboards, providing improved access to labor market information data. Uh, again, really incredible, almost uh, you know, 14x the normal volume. Uh, the highest rating in the country for efficiency in delivering, uh, you know, on-time payments to support individuals and and doing a fantastic job of preventing uh, fraud, uh, which we know was uh, ran rampant in other states because uh, these uh, unemployment benefits were delivered uh, federally sponsored dollars, but delivered by each of the 50 states. So it's a real opportunity to see how each state performed. Uh, but these folks were at the top of the leaderboard throughout. So please join me in recognizing uh, the 2021 Roaming Bising recipient, uh, the team at Job Service North Dakota. And members of Job Service are joining us from watch parties in Bismarck, Devil's Lake, Dickinson, Fargo, Grand Forks, Jamestown, Minot, Wapaton, and Wilson. Uh, but understand that potentially here in the room, we've got the uh, Job Service Deputy Director, uh, uh, Darren Brostrom and Director of Workforce Services, Phil Davis, if they're both here on behalf of the entire job service team, congratulations. And uh, leaders, come on up and receive the roaming advisor. Okay, all righty. Congrats, Darren. Good job. Put you in the middle, though, still, Darren. Well, it's a great honor to uh, get the award accepted for our, our uh, staff. They really faced a lot of challenges, challenges this year. <laughs> uh, and we're really proud of them, so thank you. Just, uh, we're just, you know, appreciative of the award. And um, I guess from from the top down, Brian's not here today, our executive director, uh, Brian Clubfell, but he really brought a calmness the last three years to, to our agency and, you know, we couldn't do it without him. So, and, and you know, like Darren said, it goes all the way down to, Governor, you mentioned in the, in the package from our workforce centers to our, our folks in the, in the claim center really doing all the hard work. So thank you. And anything you want to give a shout out to all the watch parties today that are watching? Or? Well, they, they know how we all feel about them. And uh, yeah, so congrats all, to all of you. So yeah. Okay, great. Good job. Congrats. Next award, earlier this year, the COVID response transitioned from the Unified Command to the Department of Health. And after more than 18 months, the health team continues to focus on the COVID mission. From testing and tracing to mitigation and communication and now vaccination, this team has worked and continues to work to identify cases, reduce the spread, support our healthcare system, and provide the information and resources to improve public health. 
As, as one nominator shared, it's impossible to say that one team was more important or had more impact over another. It's impossible to say that one team worked harder than another team. It's impossible to say that one team had more challenges and overcame more obstacles. It's impossible to say that one team cared more or was more committed. What is possible to say is that the Department of Health as a team worked as one, made connections, collaborated, and provided leadership like never before. For the past uh, 18 months, the whole state has relied on their knowledge and expertise to navigate through a once in a century pandemic. For their continued leadership and their commitment to compassionate data-driven decision-making, we want to acknowledge uh, this team. And uh, in a, so please again, join me in congratulating. I, I, well, I should say before that, we probably can't even give you the statistics because the volume of everything that this department had to do was off the charts. We've talked about other agencies that had 3X, 5X, 10X, uh, but you know, one example, uh, for example, within the Department of Health was the lab uh, where we led the nation for a long time in, in testing. Other states have, have university labs, other states have commercial labs, other states have health system labs. Uh, here, even in North Dakota, uh, the health service systems that serve here, like Sanford, their main lab is in Sioux Falls. Our universities didn't have big labs. The the lab here had to scale up from doing, uh, you know, sometimes less than 100 tests a day across a dozen different things like rabies, you know, to doing as many as uh, 8,000 or more uh, COVID tests a day during the, the 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 peak of the of the pandemic. And so, the, you know, unprecedented in scaling. So whether it was, you know, Kirby or Christy or Molly or Tim. Uh, or uh, Clint uh, with the work that he's been doing on in the information side, everything had to scale up uh, unbelievably and uh, an incredibly complex uh, environment to be operating in. Uh, but they've done an amazing job. We talked about saving lives and livelihoods. Uh, many folks we've recognized were saving livelihoods. This team actually has been saving a lot of lives through the work that they're doing. And so again, uh, we want to uh, uh, please join us in recognizing and congratulating our final uh, Roaming Bison Award winner for 2021, the North Dakota Department of Health. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Governor. And I think joining us for some remarks, I think other people are watching virtually, but uh, Chief of Staff Dirk Wilkie, who's been a key player through all this, is Dirk here? I'm here, do you see me? Tuck in behind me there, Dirk. Oh, okay. I snuck up on you. Uh, but thank you, Governor, for the kind words. Um, watching the team at the Department of Health these past 18 months, it's been like watching a superhero movie. I've been inspired by their spirit of heroism as they've approached obstacles with courage and tenacity, and as they dare to do great things. Heroes aren't born, they're formed through choice, determination, dedication, and a commitment to excellence. They're not always those who you'd expect, and they're most oftentimes they don't make it onto the big screen. But let me tell you, there's heroes among us. In a Department of Health, I have the privilege of working with heroes every day. Whether it's in a lab, on a computer, in a warehouse, office, or even a field, our team members have worked diligently and with excellence. They've shown up with vigor and grit and an internal drive that kept them moving forward in service of the citizens of North Dakota, even in the face of unknowing and changing circumstances. Theodore Roosevelt remarked that credit goes not to the one who criticizes or finds fault, but the one who does the work and strives valiantly, working for a worthy cause, daring to do great things. These past 18 months, the Department of Health has done great things. Our team has stretched to think creatively, to collaborate in new ways, to be flexible and adaptable in the face of change. And we've had opportunities to strengthen connections and build new relationships. We've worked with the governor's office, other state agencies, national, regional, local entities, to deliver it on a shared purpose throughout the pandemic response. I can't say enough about how incredibly proud I am to work side by side with these heroes who have dedicated their lives, or at least a season of their lives, to the ser serving the citizens of North Dakota. It's an honor for our team to receive this recognition today, and I want to thank all the team members at the Department of Health and all the state employees across the state who dare to do great things each day. So on the behalf of the Department of Health, thank you for this honor. Thank you, Dirk, uh, and congratulations. Uh, before we close, uh, we with some closing remarks for all the recipients, we've got two more gifts to uh, 
and these are these are twenty five dollar gift certificates uh, being given to people who made nominations. And the winners are. Dan McDonald and Travis Rozo. Congratulations uh, and thank you uh, and thank all of our 541 uh, nominators uh, making those over 900 nominations. Uh, in closing, again, I want to just thank uh, everyone who's been participating online. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, we want to express our gratitude for the amazing work that Team ND does every day, uh, and especially uh, uh, for those today recognizing that, that those that were nominated. Uh, the, as we say, with the curiosity to embrace the world, uh, and if we can embrace that world with a little bit of wonder, uh, meaning that we maybe uh, can take a moment and be in awe of the beauty that the world has to offer, and we can uh, approach things without thinking that we have all the answers, the humility to question uh, that, that there may be new things for us to learn, uh, and the courage to, as Dirk said, to be in the arena uh, and not be a critic on the side. Approaching challenges and opportunities alike from a place of gratitude, we can make a difference in the lives we serve. Uh, William Arthur Ward once said that feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not giving it. Uh, today, Brent and I wanted to make sure that we were we were uh, wrapping up that gratitude and presenting it uh, to the teams that were so deserving today. So thank you again to all of our team members who took the time to make sure that your gift of gratitude was delivered by submitting a nomination. And again, uh, thank you to uh, Team ND for all the work you do every day. I'm going to turn it over to Brent for a few closing remarks, and then I'll wrap up. Brent says he's good. Uh, so. Uh, but I want to, again, closing, I just want to say again, uh, uh, thanks to all of you, Veer. Thanks for those that are uh, uh, Clint and Carly and others that helped with the broadcast. Thanks for those that are here in person. Thanks for the tuned in online. And uh, again, uh, T.R. Roosevelt once said, also said that the great prize in life is the opportunity to work hard at work worth doing. And one thing that uh, Brent and I know uh, and First Lady Catherine knows is the, the work that the people of Team ND do every day for the citizens of North Dakota is absolutely work worth doing. Uh, you proved that worth over and over and over again. As Dirk said, a lot of heroes across Team ND uh, in the last year. And so again, for that, we're deeply grateful. So uh, <clears throat> keep moving forward uh, with curiosity, humility, courage, and gratitude. Uh, be healthy, be safe, and uh, have a great rest of the week. Thank you.